Welcome to the first video of the web scraping playlist. This playlist is intended for beginners that have tried to learn Python online and are now trying to get a job. And perhaps you've applied to some or you're still trying to find a path of how to get a job. And web scraping is a way to get your foot through the door into getting a developer job, a web scraping job, and then perhaps learning about cloud technologies on the job, DevOps and other programming languages, maybe building some microservices, APIs, etc. Mainly I'm going to expect beginners to look at these tutorials. So I will be re-explaining some concepts, although I will expect you to already have Python installed and perhaps try an ID like VS Code or Jupyter or, or PyCharm, one of those. I will also try to focus on explaining some more software engineering concepts where you're not just writing code to make it work. We are going to try to understand how to write maintainable code because once you're at a job, and you're writing code there, you're going to keep coming back to the same code over and over and different people are going to go work there as well. You want the code to be maintainable. So we are going to put some emphasis on actual engineering. So without rambling on for too long, let's go ahead and start off with creating a virtual environment. So hopefully you've already done this. If you have not, what I want you to do is I want you to open up VS code and then have a terminal with some kind of folder and just type in virtual env. If you've never created it before, this is what you're going to see, same as what I'm seeing. And if you did, then you're going to see the tooltip for virtual env. So by the way, I am using Python version 3.10.6. So if you're not on this version and you see me use some features that don't work in your version, uh, just make sure that you upgrade to the same version as I'm using here. Uh, also make sure that you have pip installed. And now what we're going to do is if you don't have virtual env, we are going to install it using pip you're wondering what pip is, it's essentially a package manager. You can download files from the internet if they give you a download button. Pip is essentially a Python script downloader from a specific server. You don't communicate with that server through your browser, although you can, you generally do it through this command line tool. Okay, so you type in pip install and spell it correctly. We're gonna say virtual env. Now that that's installed, again, let's type in virtual env. And now we should see something like this still exits with an error, but that's because it's expecting a path. So we want to say that we want to create a virtual environment in Venv. And by this point, you're probably like, what am I doing already? What is a Venv, etc. So what generally happens, and this is part of the craftsmanship bit is your computer is one big environment. You know how your desktop can be crowded and then you have the multiple desktop feature, or you can have multiple browsers open with different set of tabs on different windows. Exact same thing. You're taking your computer environment and you're shrinking it down to a virtual env. So all the tools that we're gonna bring in for this specific project, we're gonna put them in this Venv folder or they're gonna get put there automatically. And then if you go off and work on a different project that has its own virtual environment, it's not going to impact. And these two projects are not going to fight over in the global namespace where this virtual env exists. Okay. So when we're calling virtual env, if you're not seeing venv here, that means the tool comes from a global space. In order to activate your virtual environment, you want to go to venv scripts and then call activate. Now that your terminal is going to be prepended with a venv, that means you're inside the virtual environment. If you want to exit it, you say deactivate and actually spell it correctly. Wait, and there you go. And then again, vent scripts activate to step back into it. Now that we have essentially created our working space that is not going to collide with our other working spaces, we want to go ahead and actually start scraping. I'm going to bring out my browser. Let's go ahead and search for Khabib, which is going to be a UFC fighter. And we will just open them up. So uh, Wikipedia, you know, donate it to if you want. But what we're interested in is scraping some of the information from this legend. The first thing that we're going to learn about is the browser. The browser is going to be your ally here. It is the way that you explore what is happening on the website. You can open the developer tools. So you can do this by pressing F12. And here you can essentially explore what is happening in the browser. So I'll close this. You can also open it using the menu here and looking for something like more tools and developer tools. You can see another uh, keybind control shift I. 
So you will open it like this and again, I'll close it. And otherwise you can press inspect. This will open up the elements and you can reach the other tools for web scraping. One of your most important tools will be the network tab. So we're going to open up the network tab, make sure you have it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, although that's going to get a little bit crazy, but let's go ahead and re-navigate to the page. So I not, didn't have anything show up here, although you should have, and that's because out of all of these filters, I have fetch XHR selected. You should have all selected, which is going to show you all of the requests that a browser is making. That's right. A browser, when a page loads, it doesn't load everything at the same time. One thing loads and then the next thing loads and it's more of a step by step thing where first the page loads and then a bunch of images, some scripts, etc. What we want is the first load type document. This is going to be our HTML that we are after where most of the data that is displayed here is already contained. So let's go into the response and here's the thing that we're after. Okay. So if we would have wanted to look at some of the opponents of Khabib, so let's say we will go all the way down here and we're looking for Dustin Poirier, we will control copy his name. We will click into here in the response of this request. We're going to press control F and search for Dustin Poirier. We will see that it occurs 12 times and we also find a link. So if we wanted to, we could go ahead, grab this URL, place it here and navigate to this fighter, remove the extra slash that I had there. And there we go. So we're going to come back and reload the page. So again, we're at the document. Let's reopen it. And again, back at the response, a web scraping, as you're going to make the first call to a URL, this is what you're going to get. If you're going to make a request to something, for example, like a request like this index.php, again, this still has a URL. However, the response, the data that you get back may be different. Okay. So for now, let's keep it simple. We are working with HTML. Let's go ahead, copy this. We're going to place it into a file. So we'll create a new file. We'll call it Khabib.html. We're going to paste everything that we copied from there. And again, control A, select everything, control C to copy. Now that we have everything here, we can actually load this data. So I will close the HTML, we'll save it, create a new file. This is going to be our main.py. And what we were first going to do is we're just going to do a simple hello world, just so you understand how we're going to be running applications in this tutorial. I'm going to say Python and then main.py and press enter. I'm going to say hello world. So in case nobody explained it to you, uh, Python is an interpreted language. That means there is no compilation process. And if you don't know what that is, don't worry. All that you need to know is that in a Python script main.py, you have lines of code that go one by one. And Python is an application that into this application, you put the script and the application, the Python application reads these lines one by one and executes them. So interpreter interpreted, it reads it one by one. And that is how our script is being executed. We take our script and put it into Python. Now that we know how this is going to run, let's go ahead and remove all of this. And we want to open this HTML file that we have and just load it into memory and make sure that we can work with it. We're going to use the with keyword and then open the parentheses. So we're calling a function. We're then going to specify the first parameter, which is going to be the name of the file, khabib.html. We will then specify a flag. This is going to describe the type of interaction that we will have with the file, either read or write, or this will specify either the R or W flag. Okay. And then we'll say as F. And for now, if you don't understand what's going on, this is fine. Let's go ahead, press F and we'll say read. We'll just call this function and then we'll put this into a parameter contents equals, and now we want to print it. So what have we managed to read from a file? We'll rerun the application by going to the terminal, pressing up and enter. And uh, so we encounter our first exception. If you've never seen what an exception looks like, this is what it looks like. We have two components to an exception. We have a stack trace and then we have the actual error at the bottom. I know due to experience, just because I've encountered this error before, uh, it's happening because we haven't specified what kind of encoding is in the file. So let's go ahead and specify encoding 
UTF-8. We'll rerun the application. And this time we are gonna see uh, all of the HTML or all of the contents of this file get printed to the console. All this means is that we have loaded into memory of Python. And once it's in the memory of Python, we can actually work with it. Uh, let's have a little meta dissecting what we have here in case you don't know. The first thing that I want you to pay attention to is the colon bit. Any line that has a colon on the end means that it is about to specify scope or a body that follows. Scope and body has to be indented. Indentation is this space here. As soon as we are out or unindented, that means we have left the body. Imagine that inside of here is a kitchen drawer where you have utensils. So utensils would be print and this statement here. Outside of it would be the kitchen. That's what scope and body is. The next bit is the open. It is a built-in function into Python. Python has a lot of tools inside of it. Opening files is built into Python and this tool is given to you through this open function. Uh, the first parameter of this function is the name of the file. And then again, as I said, this is your permissions or you're trying to say what you're trying to do with the file, read it, write to it, etc. We're reading, so we have to specify the R flag. If we're writing, it's the W flag. And then in coding, uh, this is how these characters get represented as zeros and ones. How do we interpret those zeros and ones? Uh, if zero one, is it a letter A or a Chinese character, etc. In our case, UTF-8 is a way to represent these characters and generally everything will be UTF-8. Coming back to main.py, the with keyword helps us uh, specify for how long we're using something. In this case, we're opening up a file and we're working with this file. As we're opening this file for interactions with this file, we give it an alias of F and all of the interaction will happen in the body of with because the interaction with the file actually happens closer to your hardware. There are a lot of resources that are managed in between Python and the hard drive. Very low level stuff that you don't want to know about if you are a beginner. All you need to know about that with helps you first specify where in your code interaction with the file happens. As soon as you exit the body of with, you're no longer interacting with the file. And second, as soon as you exit the body of with, Python is going to know that at that point it can start cleaning up all the mess in between your actual hard drive and Python itself. So this was us grabbing the page manually. What we want to do now is we want to actually fetch the page just like the browser is doing. So when we're pressing enter here, the browser goes and fetches the page. We want to do the same. So let's go into the terminal here. We're going to install a library, another package that is going to do this for us. With Python, most of the hard work is already done for you. So let's do pip install requests. Once this is done, let's go to the file and we will import requests. Once we're using the request namespace, we want to use it to replicate the HTTP request that is being sent in the browser here. Here is the first HTTP request. And if you go to the headers section, this is where you can see what is being sent. Request headers are the things that you send. Okay. Response headers are the things that are given back to you in the response, including the response itself. This is called the body. And you can also include a body with your request, although that is mostly on post requests. This specifically, the method of this request is a get method. So it's a get request. So, and the URL is this, which is also the same as in the address bar. So let's grab the URL. We're going to go to requests and depending on what method the HTTP request is, is it either get, is it post, etc that's the way that we would specify it. Ours is a get request. And then we specify a string with a value of the URL and we will get a response. Store the response in the response variable. We will then print response status code. We'll stop printing the contents of the file and even more so we'll just comment this whole bit out. Although I will leave the code in here. Again, let's rerun our main.py and status code is 200. That means it, everything is okay. And that's the same status code that we get here. If it would be something like 400, 403, uh, for anything else, uh, you basically say, well, you bet request. You don't get any data back. In this scenario, 
everything is okay. Let's go ahead and print this. Response has text. So let's go ahead and utilize text first. And this essentially gives us the HTML back. We will then reuse the code that we had here. I'm going to click and drag with my middle mouse button. Paste this code over here. I'm going to change the name to be Khabib underscore two as this is something that we are creating or we're collecting. I will then change the R flag to W flag. We're going to write. I'm going to keep encoding at UTF-8. Instead of reading, there is nothing to read here yet. And again, as, as I said, the point here is to write F dot write. And then we're just going to write response.txt. Rerun our application. We'll see the HTML being outputted again, although now we have our own file here. If we scroll to the bottom, we're going to see this ending on line 2150. And the file that we copied ends on line 2150 as well. Fetching it from the browser or fetching it from the requests API ourselves gives us the same result. Although browser is a little bit hard to interact with Python, you can script anything. So here, hopefully you can see first steps to automation and essentially leaving the browser and using Python as the browser. If you're wondering about HTTP and you have a bunch of questions, I would say hold off a little bit as we're going through this playlist more and more, you will find out about it and get more familiar with it. Otherwise, this will be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment with a question or say thanks. It will help out the algorithm. If you want the source code, come support me on Patreon. And a big thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters. Your help is very much appreciated. Hopefully, on to the next video.